Hey, welcome back to the Single Malt Review. We're back in Scotland again, up in Speyside, for an independently bottled Glen Grant. Mm. This time from Gordon and MacPhail. Yes, indeed. One of their, um, one of Gordon and MacPhail's actually quite expansive mm. range of whiskies, where they, they still possess the sort of historical right to bottle the whiskey because they were, they were bottling it and selling it before Glen Grant as a company was. So they sort of still have the right through the labyrinthian realm of sort of patents, copyrights, whatever, um, in Scotland, to sort of sell it under its own name. And um, they have quite a few of those. Glenn Grant, there's um, Ardbeg, uh, there's the one that's name I always forget, that we had that really nice mini of. Glenn Tockers. Glenn Tockers, that's another one. Um, they've got quite a few of those. Uh, Glenn Grant is probably the most famous, probably the most one they do the most mm. of. And they have in a, what I think is a slightly bold move, maintained the original packaging from back when they used to sell it, way, way back in the day. And it looks pretty fuddy, I think, but um, not too bad, mm. I suppose. So the whiskey, which is what we're really here to see, it's a 2008 distilled Glen Grant, which is, as you will note, pretty jolly recent. Mm. Uh, bottled this year, making it nine years old. But Glen Grant is a whiskey that does pretty well for itself. Yeah. Um, pretty young, so that's uh, not necessarily a knock against it. We tried the 10 year old Glen Grant not too long ago and I found it amazingly light, bordering on quaffable. You can mm. down it like a black wine. It's, um, it's one of those whiskies. I think you might find this one a bit more robust. Mm. This one is made from a mixture, and it'll be a fairly small mixture because they're, they're batched, these mm. whiskies. You know, they come out and then they're gone. Um, and there's a multitude of different years available. This is one of the younger your younger ones, mm. um, but it's first fill sherry hogsheads mixed with sort of bourbon hogsheads. Yeah. So there'll be quite a, and there is quite a significant sherry influence in this mm. one, um, starting with the colour. Yeah, if a we pretty, assume no artificial colouring or chill filtering, mm -hmm. then yeah, that is a rich. It's a pretty pretty healthy old colour for a nine year old. Nine -year -old yeah. yeah. So that's that's really bringing it mm. up front. Ooh, that is mm. a big expressive nose. It's. It's rich with ginger and uh, other warm spices, some uh, sticky date pudding. Mm. Yeah, how it really surprises me is it's not a hugely Glen Granty nose. Glen Grant is usually sort of very, very mellow with sort of sweet custard mm. and very gentle things, floral, light, very, very light, very, very sweet, very, very easy on the nose. This one is actually quite savoury. There's a lot of Really nice savoury oak in here, even a little oh. bit of sort of leather nuts. I'm getting kind of <sighs> overwhelmed yeah. at first by rich Christmas pudding aromas, but that is giving way yeah. to some of that. It's very, very rich, yeah. but there's a there's a lift in here there's which some I don't know. Vanilla custard, get. a little yeah. leather and beeswax. Mm -hmm. Just at the end, once that initial sweet, fruity uh, pudding quality has mm -hmm. dissipated slightly. And I, I like it a lot. Mm. It's a nose with it's a nose with more, and that strength is sort of just perfect for not having any particular. It doesn't doesn't set the nose on fire. You can really, you can really get in there and have a good old snifter of it, and yeah. oh, it's very rewarding. But anyway, anyway, on with the palate. We'll see what we can find. Oh, mm. that has a strong, savoury oak kick at first. Then it gives way to lashings of fresh ginger. There's yeah, a lot of spice actually. A bit of um, maybe some Chinese five spice. But also some yeah, sweet puddings, some rich fruit. A little bit of um, nutty and beeswaxy finish. Yeah, beeswax is a good one. There's quite a lot of beeswax going on there, which isn't isn't too usual for mm. the for the style of whiskey, space sides or especially Glen Grant. Um, this to me is where the youth really makes itself yeah. known. It's a very, very young, very vibrant, and a quite a little bit, um, quite a little bit rough in terms of mm. you know savagery on the tongue. There's, it does show its um, yeah. does show its maybe not so beveled with age edges on there. That's not a bad thing. Um, mm. It encourages one to drink it a little bit more slowly yeah. than the average Ben Grant, which I could just about have from the bottle, and I'd be perfectly okay. It's quite fiery and punchy, and yeah, it just dries out to a long finish of honey and beeswax. It's very sherry dominant. Yeah. Very interesting. Um, sherried Glen Grant is 
rare. I've never tried a 100% sherry one, so I couldn't speak to what that really, you know, what that really brings. Um, but this one has quite a lot in it, especially compared to usual Glen Grant, which is none, hmm. um, or a tiny, tiny sliver of it, if any. But it creates a surprisingly more robust whiskey than myself and I think most people really consider Glen Grant to be. It turns it into a completely different thing. It's one of these distilleries which has this sort of... It's why I don't like Klein Leash and Sherry Cask. Sherry Cask, I just cannot stop tripping over independent bottles of Klein Leash, which is a whiskey I really, really adore, but they're all bloody sherry matured. And I think Klein Leash is something that really benefits bourbon and only bourbon. Mm. I don't like it because it's transformed if you put it in sherry. It becomes a completely different whiskey. I think Glen Grant is one of those, but it turns into something that is completely different, but also really nice. I mm. like this one. The bourbon is really making its presence mm. felt though. There are lashings of vanilla, there's a good bit of woody oak, mm. a little uh, whiff of wood smoke, and um, quite a bit of sort of a fiery heat. Mm. I'll give this one... Is really harkening back to that. But I'll one a good helping, just Ooh. to do a real... See if we are chill filtered mm. or not here. We're pretty clear. This it's, yeah, it ends up crystal clear. I don't notice much difference from adding mm. quite a generous splash of water there. Mm. So maybe, maybe mm. chill filtered, maybe. Um, we'll give it a moment. We're on a pretty warm day here as well. Mm. We're, we're warming up this side of the air as most of our viewers are cooling down, I suspect, up there in the north, um, but, northern hemisphere, that is. Um, but speaking mm. of the bourbon making its presence felt, that is all lemons and mangoes on the nose now. Well, mango is not so much a bourbon thing, but lemon yeah. certainly. Um, once again, adding water has really brought the fruit fruit to the fore. Mm. Oh, yeah, I may have added a bit too much water there. It's gone uh, once again into the slightly dank tinned fruit territory. Oh, dear. Oh, well, it can mm. always happen with space yeah. sides. But yeah, this one, this one I really like. Scores on this one. Mm. Um, for a young whiskey, I think it really, really works extremely mm. hard and it gets its way up to an 87 for yeah. me. What do you think? I rated 84. Mm. It's fruity, it's tasty, it's a, yeah, there's first fill with sherry casks have really added a lot of flavour in a short space of time. Yeah, and it's mega, mega affordable at mm. this end of the age spectrum. Um, this one you probably pick up for less than you would a Glen Grant 10, um, and that's that's really saying something, really. Mm. I think you're just getting genuinely better whiskey for that, for the price you're paying. Um, I mean, you can buy, you can you can get forty year old Glen Grant in the same in the same range, and you will pay maybe a hair more for that. But um, as long as you like your young Glen Grant, and I love it, I think you, everyone should enjoy a bit of young Glen Grant. It's just one of those one of those whiskies that's hard to hate, really really difficult to hate, I think, um, and easy to love. So yeah, this one I think it's it should be available now. It's the present run. It was bottled this year, kind of all gone. Um, yeah, this one really really recommended for people that like um, both like Glen Grant and like robust Speyside whiskey. Um, I think it's a really good, strong, mm. punchy Speyside. Yep, that just go easy on the water. Mm. All right. Well, we'll keep on trucking here. That was the Singmalt review with Glen Grant by Gordon A. McPhail. Almost said Duncan Taylor. That would be a <laughs> That would be a correction, but anyway, um, Slunger, see you soon.